Hello everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I'm excited to show you this game. I got completely destroyed this game, I'm gonna say that up front, so hopefully you'll still enjoy watching it and you'll, you can think about the mistakes that I made or things that you might have done differently. And certainly there's some luck and randomness in the game, but I think our choices matter and a lot of the fun for me of War of the Ring is playing your best despite maybe bad luck or randomness that didn't quite go your way. So one of the things that you might notice right away, I'm playing shadow, my opponent's playing free people, and I offered them two action tokens because I think that's most balanced for the base game. And you'll see that I only rolled, I allocated one eye and then, and then I rolled two more and I only got one muster. And obviously it's nice to get two musters on turn one because then you can get Sarum on turn one. But there are going to be plenty of games if you play War of the Ring that you're not going to roll two musters turn one. And so I think it's important as Shadow that you can still be prepared for that and still make good decisions. So you can see that my opponent only got one movement. So, you know, the fellowship's not going to be too fast and that's not, that's not bad for me. So they start by playing a card and obviously it's nice for free people if they can get a palantir with gandalf as guide and then have a nice playable card they're going to draw two strategy cards so they draw help unlooked for and dan iron foots guard and then what can i do i have one muster and i need to decide what to do with these palantirs i obviously can't play both my cards i have ring wraiths are abroad which is great king is revealed useful combat effect probably not that useful card effect but either way i'm going to draw a card so do you draw a character card do you draw a strategy card Already I'm making decisions and it's not obvious to me what's best. If you start with three eyes and sort of a slow military that you know that know is going to be a slow military, maybe you just start drawing character cards right now. I don't know. My inclination by default is to draw strategy cards as, as shadow, but I don't know exactly what's best. So I drew a strategy card and I got Pits of Mordor, which is a perfectly nice early game mustering card. And the only trick is that Sauron has to be at war and I only have one muster. So do you muster Sauron to war now, or do you muster Isengard? If you only roll one muster next turn, which is certainly possible, then maybe it's better to have Isengard at war so that then you can at least get Saruman turn two. But otherwise, what are you doing with this Palantir on turn one if you don't muster Sar uh, Sauron to war right now? So I'm curious to know what would you do Right now, seeing this situation, would you muster Sauron to war and then play Pits of Mordor, which is a good result, or would you muster Isengard to war and then draw a card with this Palantir, or maybe play Ring Wraiths or Abroad just to get your armies moving? So what I did, so the, my opponent moved the Fellowship and... Uh, oh, I guess they, they mustered elves. So they mustered elves and I knew that they mustered elves. Um, and now does that change your decision? Do you still, do you now muster Sauron to war? Um, I think maybe with that elves muster, it tilts me, it pushes me a little bit towards mustering Sauron because maybe they're going to get the elves to war all the way. They have another muster right here. And since I gave them two action tokens, they do have the, the muster action token. So maybe it's not so crazy. Anyway, I uh, start by moving th um, this army to uh, from Baradur to Gorgoroth just because I don't know exactly what I'm going to do yet. I know I'm going to get that army moving at some point. So um, then they move the Fellowship, which makes sense, and uh, I miss them. So now I have to decide what to do, and I decided to muster Isengard to war because... I want to make sure at least if I get one muster next round, I'll be able to get Sauron, uh, Saruman and get my my eighth action die. And then um, they go ahead and move armies. That's a pretty standard move. And then I play Ring Wraiths are Abroad. Now, maybe that's too early to play Ring Wraiths are Abroad. I get one extra Nazgul in this army that I'm, I guess, planning on sending up north. So that's a minor thing, but I'd, I at least keep my armies moving and... You know, it wouldn't be bad to be able to put a Nazgul on the Fellowship they had gotten revealed, but um, that's what I did. So how would you play that first turn? It's amazing how many choices there are just on turn one. 
All right. So, um, and then my opponent uses their action token now at the end of the round, which is fine as long as um, the, the round only ends when both players pass. So that's a good, perfectly fine play. And now they're setting themselves up. If they get two musters next round, they can get the elves to war and start mustering in elves before I arrive in Lorien. So, um, you know, it's interesting. It's interesting to imagine this scenario where I had mustered Sauron to war and then maybe this army in, in North Anduin Vale started coming uh, from Dol Guldur to North Anduin Vale. I don't know. Or maybe I just send it straight north. F forget about forget about Lorien and just send this army due north and have Gondor down here. I don't know. There are a lot of choices. All right. I get Return of the Witch King. Happy to see Swarm of Bats, which is useful against this army in Old Forest Road if I'm coming up there. And Candles of Corpses could be good if I'm going for a corruption strategy. Um, obviously, the Fellowship hasn't moved much yet. All right. Um, I allocate one eye and I only get one muster. So now I am feeling pleased with having only uh, having mustered Isengard because I don't have um, I, I that's I only have one muster. So this way I can get Saruman. Um, you know, it would be nice to be able to get one more, um, one more muster so that the, um, at least, at least, uh, Sauron could be at war. But if you play War of the Ring, there are going to be games where as Shadow, you only get two musters on the first two turns. That's not, it's not that crazy for that to happen. Um, so, all right. So my opponent, seeing that I have only one muster, decides... Okay, so I, I get my armies moving. I think that makes sense. And then my opponent uses the will of the West to muster the elves toward war. Now, you could have used the army muster. You could have used the will of the West either way. It doesn't really matter at this point. But um, what's interesting here is they're, they're saying, I'm not going to get Gandalf, which makes sense because I don't have Saruman yet. So it's fine to use that will of the West for that. Um, they can move the fellowship once with this palantir and then they can muster twice. So the elves are at war now and, and now I'm kind of, uh, at least for me, I'm feeling like I'm in trouble and I have to rush a little bit. So what I do, and I think this might be my biggest mistake of the game is I muster Sauron to war now. <laughs> and so, uh, this is sort of the worst of both worlds because now I'm not going to get Saruman turn, turn two. And, um, I could have, you know, had the witch King if they put the elves to war, or I like, I could have stopped the, the, the elves from going to war. If I'm not going to get my second die on turn two anyway, then it seems worth it to have either stopped the elves or get witch King. So, and one of the other reasons why I did, why I decided to do that is otherwise I don't have a use for this Palantir. I have another Palantir here. And if, if, um, the Southron, if the if Sauron is not at war, I, I have no playable card really, um, and I I don't really want to draw another card. I could, but that's my thinking. I'm really curious to know: Would you get Saruman here and just let the elves start to muster up, um, or would you do what I did? Belatedly, I mean, maybe I made a mistake last round and maybe I would have hoped to get two musters. If I had two musters, this wouldn't be such an issue. I could just muster. Isengard once and I could, or I could muster Saruman and I could muster Sauron to war, but I only rolled one. So I had to choose and I chose, um, Sauron. So curious to hear your thoughts on that. All right. And then, um, obviously they start mustering to Lorien and I play Pits of Mordor now, maybe better late than never. And then, um, they play, what do they do? They pass, I move armies, and then they play Dane Ironfoot's Guard. So obviously I'm not happy to see Dane Ironfoot's Guard as I, you know, send my army north. Um, but, you know, so it's not unreasonable that you might run into some um, problems if you're going to take so long to head north. Um, and my opponent did was cycling uh, strategy cards with Gandalf. So obviously that's good for them. And they get Dol Amrahel of Dol Amroth. Nice. And then I continue to move my armies north. And 
then I attack Lorien here instead of continuing to move because um, one, I don't really want to run into power too great, and two, I want to put it under siege before um, next round, and then they would be able to muster more into Lorien. Um, I don't know exactly how much I should worry about that because they're running, you know, at some point they're going to run low on elves, and if they put a four, uh, another elven elite unit in Lorien, it's going to certainly deplete their ability to muster in Woodland Realm. So maybe I didn't actually have that much of a rush to do that. Um, all right, but I, that's what I do. And it's slightly more efficient because to attack this way because then if I get an army movement, then I can use an army movement to Northern Rovanian and get an extra half move out of it. So it's I don't think it's crazy. Um, all right, they get Mithril Coat and Sting and Aomer. Let's see what they end up discarding. They discard House of Stewards. Obviously, that makes sense. And um, I get uh, one muster and two more eyes. So that's not really great for me. And then they roll a pretty flexible roll and can muster more. So it's kind of painful to be at seven dice on turn three. And that was kind of self-inflicted. Um, at least if you're going to be at seven dice on turn three, you could be preventing some um faction from going to war and and at least have the witch king so um all right so i go ahead and uh okay they move i get a hit i get an eye and then they reveal into moria and they decide to um risk it they're gonna lose gandalf if they can but they thought one corruption was too um was too inefficient and so they risk it and they get a three. So, you know, it's basically 50-50 if you get a better tile or a worse tile, where a worse tile means, in this case, means zero corruption, and therefore you can't lose Gandalf. And I think particularly when you have a Will of the West showing and you can get Gandalf for sure, I'm not sure that I would be that, um, like, risky. I think I might just take the sure bet of getting Gandalf, uh, even if it potentially costs me one or two corruption. But um, you know, this worked out really well for them. So that's nice. And they lose Gandalf. And um, then I get the Witch King, at least, finally. So round three. And then they get Gandalf, which is great for them. And then I go ahead and move armies around. And the reason why I moved these armies from Mount Gundabad to Eagle's Eyrie is that I thought I was going to take over Carrick and um, and Dale and just take out Dew, I guess. Um and then that seemed like a useful reinforcement. Uh, the other thing that I could have considered is um, sending these guys toward Rivendell or toward Greyhaven because it would be hard to defend everywhere. They still have, I mean, this could defend Greyhaven relatively well, but they're also going to be able to muster one more into um, Woodland Realm. So I'm curious, what would you have done with this other extra half movement? Uh, it's not, it's not exactly clear to me. I mean, this, this feels pretty, like makes a good amount of sense, I think. Uh, but curious to know if you would have done something else with that. All right. I tackled forest road and at least now I have one of my two swarm of bats so I can play that here. And, uh, it's always feel satisfying to cancel that scouts and, um, and then I get the hit and they get one back, which is okay. Uh, and they play elven rope and, uh, oh, they think for a second and instead they decide to hide. I did not um, have any character dice that round. And therefore, even if I had some nasty tricks to play in Moria, uh, I couldn't. And so it, it makes sense, I think, for them to hide now, uh, even though they're going to have to discard a card from their hand because that way they can move at the start of next round. So... Uh, I go ahead and proceed with my attack against Woodland Realm. And, you know, looking at this, I think, okay, you know, they got to muster once into Woodland Realm and once into Lorien. I delayed myself by a die, but if I hadn't done that, they could have easily mustered even more, I think. Um, so I don't know. I, I really don't know. It's not, it's really not clear to me. I, I'm curious to know what people would do. All right. I got, uh, Shadows Gather, which is a useful reinforcement card, and uh, my opponent gets top decks uh, Thrandall's Archers. 
So obviously that's great for them. It's not, again, it's not crazy. They're going to draw some reinforcements. There could be power too great. There could be Thrandall's archers. There could be Caliborn's Gladrium. There are a lot of things that they could be drawing here. And, um, you know, they've also drawn seven strategy cards at this point in the game. So they have some options. All right. I get rid of the side. They get rid of wizard staff. That's pretty straightforward. And I allocate one eye and get a whole bunch of musters, but still no characters. So I'm not even threatening um, something nasty in uh, in Moria. There's like nothing really that I can do. And what's interesting is uh, I don't have any rings. So I, I think sometimes when Shadow gets bad action rolls or, or just inconsistent action rolls, then um, it can be really nice if they don't have a ring because you can sort of plan around that. So um, what do you do this round as Shadow? Clearly you're going to get Saruman. Turn four Saruman is late, super late, but um, still better than nothing. And then what do you do with your other two musters? So do you get um, South Rounds and Easterlings to war? Uh, here, I'll show you the rule. So this is, uh, sorry, this is uh, the free people rule. And, and then they start by playing Thrandall's Archers right off the bat. So this is a nice, a really nice flexible role for them. They can run with the Fellowship pretty easily. What do you do? Um, I decide that I want to hunt the Fellowship at least a little bit. They're in Moria. I kind of want to make it a little bit harder for them. And I wouldn't mind an extra Nazgul. And I also wouldn't mind mustering a little more in Dol Guldur because I anticipate um, playing Shadows Gather uh, potentially from Dol Guldur into uh, Lorien or into Woodland Realm. So I'm happy to get one extra Nazgul and um, an extra regular in Dol Guldur in exchange for two rerolls against the Fellowship and being able to use that Nazgul somewhere else. The drawback is I'm not going to be able to get the South Rounds and Easterlings to war this round if I also intend to um, get Saruman and use these army musters as actual armies instead of as musters. So that's my thinking. And um, they go ahead and move the Fellowship. What else are they going to do? I hit them, which is nice. Um, and get a two. So not, not a reveal. Uh, they take two. And then um, I get Saruman. That's pretty straightforward. And they pass and I attack Woodland Realm. And I go ahead and play Relentless Assault here. I don't know exactly what would have been better. Like maybe I could have played Flocks of Corbain to cycle a character card. Um, that could be reasonable. I played Relentless Assault because... I was a little afraid of um, it just it just gives you options. And then on top of that, I'm cycling strategy cards, which has sort of been my um, plan at this point. So would you lose two here against a fairly fortified stronghold? They have seven hit points to my 10. Um, I decide to not lose any and I roll one six and they get two hits. So that's pretty darn average. The thing that's nice here is that I do in by doing one, they have a choice between either taking that one regular and putting them down to only three units in the combat or three combat strength, or taking one hit and then basically pulling a elven regular out of the reinforcement pool, which is what they do. And I draw half arcs and goblin men, which is very useful because it turns on um, threats and promises. And you'll notice now that they are down to a single regular in the elven reinforcement pool. So there just is not much there. And um, and Gondor's not at war, so my thinking is um, I could potentially get Dol Amroth if I, if I manage to cycle into Corsairs of Umbar. So that's, that's my plan at this point. Uh, I play Half-Orcs and Goblin Men because I want to be able to productively play Devil Re of Orthanc, and I need to reinforce this combat. Uh, and then, oh, sorry, I, we missed that um, they had moved, they had moved one, they had moved a second time. And when they moved a second time out of Moria, I missed them on fives. So, you know, that happens. It's not like that crazy odds. I think it's like 25% or something like that, that I miss. I mean, better than 50-50 that I, that I hit. 
Um, not that much better. Okay, and now my opponent asks about crowning Aragorn. And so they know that Southrons and Easterlings are not at war. They can safely separate Aragorn. The Fellowship is doing well. They don't really want to move again right now. And um, it's great. So they separate Aragorn or Strider to Minas Tirith. And then I go ahead and keep attacking Woodland Realm. And I make some progress, but not that much. I think I press once. I play Flox or Crobane here. Maybe I shouldn't have pressed. Um, and then they end up using their last regular. So now the Elven Force Pool has absolutely nothing in it. And they have three regulars in Woodland Realm to my um, three regulars and an elite. And... Um, I have a look high, so I should be able to, I think, reinforce this and win, uh, win this, uh, siege. The question is, where do my other victory points come from? Um, obviously Lorien is too. I had initially planned to use Shadows Gather from Eagle's Eyrie through Karak to capture it and get to, um, Woodland Realm and then be able to take Dale and maybe eventually Erebor, but, um, that would put the North to war or closer to war. And um, I really don't want them to be able to defend Rivendell with North units or Grey Havens with North units. So these, these strongholds cannot possibly be reinforced right now. Um, so it makes me tempted to go after Grey Havens. And um, so they get Aragorn and then I start mustering in North Downs. Now, maybe instead I should get the Southrons and Easterlings to war first so that I can um, play Shadow is Moving and so that I could potentially come up and take Erebor. I, it's just, it's not clear to me what's best. Um, I would be curious to know what would you do with that muster. My plan right now is to start mustering up and either going going for Rivendell or Grey Havens, um, hopefully cycling into Power Too Great or... Um, um, Rage of the Dawn of Linnings. Those would be good strategy cards to be able to get to. Uh, okay, and my opponent got Aragorn. So that was a really great turn for them. They played Thranduil's Archers. They um, moved twice, didn't get revealed out of Moria, and then crowned Aragorn with two dice. So we're on turn five. They have... The Fellowship is pretty healthy, and um, my combat is going super slowly. So uh, now I roll only one eye and they get this crazy uh, character movement roll and um, like they could, they could make it to Mordor this turn. They're, they don't really have a rush to do that, but, but they could. Uh, so they start by moving and they're safe. And then I decide, and I don't know, maybe this is a mistake. I decide to spend half an army movement to get, this army onto Parth Celebrant and onto the Fellowship because they have a bunch of movement. And if I reveal them, potentially I can slow them down. So I I think at this point I decide I'm going to be playing um, Ulug High onto Woodland Realm. This army in South Anduin Vale can come and reinforce Lorien eventually. Uh, I don't know what other half movement would be productive. Maybe it would be good to go far Harad to near Harad to Umbar. I, I think, I think that I'm also assuming right now, even, or even though it's wrong, I'm thinking that I can play, um, shadow is moving. And so that's why I'm not prioritizing these South runs and Easterlings. All right. So my opponent moves again, and this time I hit them and the reroll did help. So that's always satisfying. And, um, and then they get revealed with a zero. I play Ulug Hyde to reinforce Woodland Realm. They hide. I attack Woodland Realm again. I go ahead and play Deadly Strife here because I'm thinking that I'm not going to be attacking the rest of Do. I'm just going to be satisfied with Woodland Realm and maybe eventually Dale. Um, and I want to finish off Woodland Realm. So that's nice to get enough hits. And they get three back on me. So... Maybe I could, and then I redrew um, many kings. So maybe that was a little overkill, but 
I didn't want to mess around anymore. And then they play King Brand's Mend here. So they have gotten all three mustering cards in due in the top um, top 10 cards. It's not crazy. Like that can certainly happen. Maybe I shouldn't have marched up here and should have gone after Gondor. I, I don't know. Um, so I muster more in North Dunland thinking that I'm going to go for Great Havens. I don't know what 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 other targets are better should i go for um helms deep maybe helms deep is the better choice um i don't know so but that's what i do i muster into north north downs and then uh they pass i guess and then i play i try and play shadows moving which is illegal and so we undo it all and then instead i um play many kings and i think okay well i guess i'll go after um, Erebor, after all, wasn't really my plan, but um, this is pretty efficient because I get a stack of 10 and um, I'll get them to war eventually. And then I'll hope to draw Corsairs of Umbar, right? Like what else, what else can I do? So they move a third time, which of course makes sense. And I miss them there. And then I start to get my armies moving. And then they say, I hope I won't regret not moving again which is a little weird. I, I Like, why not just move again? Um, but you're rolling six dice next turn, so it's pretty likely you'll be able to move twice, even if you get revealed. So they play Aomer here. Um, seems fine. Uh, you know, it's not. they're not currently being attacked, but I guess they didn't want to waste cards. Yeah, I don't know. Wow, look at this. They have Imrath, Dol Imrath, and Curtain Ships. Lots of good defense for Gondor. Not that Curtain Ships actually works, but they've drawn they've drawn a lot of good strategy cards. Okay, so I get my armies moving and uh, head towards Grey Havens. Nothing they can do about it. North is not at war. Uh, dwarves are not at war. So my plan is put Grey Havens under siege and then go take Erebor. And this uh, do plus um, Grey Havens is seven, plus Lorien is nine, and then I can take Pilar Gear. Or maybe I can draw into Corsairs of Umbar, in which case I can take Dol Amroth and skip Erebor. So I still have some chances, I guess, but they're in, they're in, um, oh no, they're not quite in Mordor yet. Mordor yet. All right, so they draw Power to Great now, and... Um, Allocate an eye, I get a decent number of attacks, and uh, then they get this nice roll, very flexible, and uh, what do they do? They start by moving the Fellowship, makes sense, I miss them, and then I muster Southrons and Easterlings toward war, they move the Fellowship again, and I miss them. So, you know, there were definitely a few times that I missed, uh when it would have been nice to hit, but what can you do? If I had cruel weather, that would be nice, but I don't even know that it matters. They play Elven Rope. I move armies around. They muster the north one towards war. And I move armies around some more. I get ready for Umbar. I'm just hoping that I draw Corsairs of Umbar because at this point it's pretty dire. They're getting into Mordor. Uh, it's very likely that they um, can destroy the ring in two in two rounds. So, like next round, I have to get all my victory points. Seems super unlikely, but maybe they won't be able to destroy it in two rounds. All right, they play power too great. Obviously, that's nice timing. I don't really need um, shadow is moving at this point. I guess. Um, I get rid of Candles of Corpses because, you know, can't use it uh, productively. I don't think corruption is going to be an issue. And I save my uh, character die in the hopes that they will, um, I don't know, be tempted. And so now they, they, have to use their, they have to use their token at least. And I don't know, maybe this is uh, a waste for me to even wait, but 
Um, you know, it's possible they might not have used their token and done it this way. But obviously, that's the whole benefit of tokens. Like, it's not just about drawing the card. It's also the tempo that because I don't have cruel weather, they don't have to, like, guess whether or not I have it. They just can find out. And if I did, then they would move an extra time. And since I don't, they don't have to move an extra time. So what would you do here with this character die? Um, here's the hunt pool right now. The hunt pool has basically three tiles that could reveal if you had, if you play orc patrol, which is what I was thinking about doing. Um, I could play orc patrol and try and draw one of these four tiles um, to reveal them, which slows them down a little bit because they'll end up potentially starting um, their climb up Mordor uh, revealed. I don't know. It thins the hunt pool a little bit. I don't know that that's actually beneficial given that there's a blue tile, but, and I don't have any red tiles, though I could also play on on they went. So I don't know. It's pretty dire, but what, what do you guess? What would you do? I ended up not playing work patrol at all and just attacking Grey Havens, hoping that they're just going to get revealed a bunch as they move up Mordor and they roll kind of low on, um, character dice in Mordor, even though they're rolling six, like their expectation is to roll, uh, three each turn and they, and they haven't had to use any rings at all. They've just had nice, pretty nice, smooth action rolls. So, um, like they basically get four movement. Uh, we would expect them to have a total of eight movement over the next two rounds. And eight is likely enough to destroy this. Uh, you know, even if you get revealed a couple times, eight is still enough. So maybe I get a red tile in there. Maybe they just roll low, right? I have to have to have them roll low, low movement in Mordor. That, that's my hope. R low movement in Mordor. And then in two rounds, I can... Um, I can get enough victory points. So they play Challenge of the King here, and they don't get any eyes. Uh, you know, obviously it would be nice if they could, but they didn't. And um, let's see. I allocate one eye, and then uh, obviously they move into Mordor. And then I roll three attacks on eight dice, which is not, not what we're hoping for. Um... So that's going to be, that's going to be pretty tough. And then they get five movement <laughs> and I don't have day without dawn. So, um, this is basically game over, I think with these action rolls, I really needed, uh, free people to just roll a small number of actions. Um, the other thing, right. So I should talk about this. The other thing I could have done is, um, either play orc patrol or not either way. Um, put on, on, they went in there and then allocate, I could have allocated like four or five eyes. Um, if I allocate, let's say, let's say I just get to pick the number of eyes I have in the box. Let's say I have six eyes in the box. Um, then I end up rolling, I have nine dice total, so I end up rolling three dice. That's probably not. That's, that's probably bad, right? They could go for a military victory pretty easily if I only have three actions. So I probably, my perfect number is probably five, five dice in the, um, in the box. And then I get four actions to their six. Definitely bad, but I'll hopefully get the, um, the mouth. And then if they get an eye, let's say I have five eyes in there. If I get an eye, they go up to six corruption. So maybe this is, this is, I, maybe I save candles of corpses, um, and then hope they roll an eye. I hope they draw an eye and get like a bunch of corruption. Um, I don't know. Is it better to just hope that they roll small number of movement? Cause I think with like only six movement or like f six is expected. If they get like four movement or, uh, sorry, four movement over two rounds. Like one, if they had gotten this exact roll, but the reverse of it, only one movement, like they could have not destroyed the ring. I don't know exactly what the chances are and which is better to put a bunch of eyes in there and then try and corrupt them. I think because I already got rid of candles of corpses, it doesn't make sense, but, 
Um, right. And they have mithril coat and sting. It's just, it's pretty hard to do. Okay. So, um, so they move and I don't even reveal them. I just get a two. So like, this is just, uh, really no good. I go ahead and play a red tile here because I have a bunch of Palantirs and like maybe they'll roll zero movement and just get revealed a bunch and hit the stop tile and I'll draw more red tiles. I don't know. It, it seems nearly impossible, but that's my thinking. All right. They move again here and get an eye for two reveal. At least they're revealed, it's slowing them down a little bit. Um, and then I attack gray havens here and I play hill trolls because I'm just hoping to get enough hits. I I don't know exactly what's what's best. Maybe I should have moved um moved Nazgul in. I feel like there's a decent chance that with we come to kill. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe this is just too optimistic of an attack. So anyway, I play we come to kill. I get no hits on a dice and then they get two hits against me. And so I roll only one on we come to kill and I miss. So, I mean, that's sad. Um, but maybe that's, maybe that's my fault. It's not really going to matter, but they hide the fellowship. I play orc patrol here because I'm just hoping to reveal them and slow them down. Um, it's kind of silly. Like, why didn't I play it before? If, I, if that was my plan, um, I get the zero reveal, which is the best, which is really the best outcome I could hope for at this point, uh, just to slow them down. They hide again. And then I have to move Nazgul because otherwise there's, I can't really take gray havens with, with what's left there. So that's what I do. And then they play mithril coat and sting, which is just, um, you know, what are my chances? I, now this is maybe a mistake. I play, um, worn with sorrow and toil here as the card effect because, um, I want to get rid of mithril coat and sting and I don't really have anything particularly productive to do with that palantir. I don't have any rings to use. Um, I'm going to use this mustard to get the mouth of Sauron. So, but yeah, I don't know. Is that worth it just to get rid of Mithril Coat and Sting? They can take some corruption along the way also. So, um, this is, this is probably a mistake because I don't know exactly how they're going to, like what result, I guess with a, with an eye, if they, if they hit an eye, then yeah, they end up probably just taking the eye. Maybe. Anyway, it's it's pretty hopeless. So uh, they, I, they do, I do draw the red three, um, but they use Mithra Coat and Sting and get a one. No reveal instead. They take a random here, which is a little weird. Um, I think I would be inclined to just take Gimli, but um, because that way this two, this two reveal ends up getting you Gollum and you're not revealed in case you roll like zero movement next round. So, um, uh, they take random, I get Pippin and then I get to draw for, um, Worm of Sorrow and Toil. I get Gua here, which doesn't really matter. Uh, no, that, that could matter a little bit into Lorien, right? Gandalf could go into Lorien. So maybe slightly relevant. And then I get the, the mouth and then, um, I attack into Iron Hills because, um, I guess I'm thinking I have to get that anyway. And like, it's just ridiculous. I, I don't know. It probably doesn't matter at this point. Um, I attack into Iron Hills thinking that I'll go besiege Erebor and then um, I'll take Erebor. I'll take Lorien. I'll take Grey Havens. That's eight. And then I can take Dale and Pilar gear is my thinking. Because at this point, like odds of drawing Corsairs, relatively low. And I don't know, maybe I should just attack into Grey Havens and cycle uh, Shadows on Misty Mountains. But I like potentially playing Shadows on Misty Mountains and then using uh, Shadows Gather into, I don't know, it's, it's silly. Okay, I attack into Iron Hills and miss. 
So that is fairly unlikely. And they didn't play scouts or anything. And then um, Erebor's looking pretty buff. I go ahead and attack Erebor anyway. I don't know. Maybe the point is finish off Grey Havens, try and cycle into Corsairs, and then you don't have to bother with Erebor at all. Um, that's, pro that's probably the better choice. Like, this is... Even with even with even if I had killed that regular, it would be one regular and three elites. That's seven hit points, two leaders against these guys. It's just it doesn't make sense. The out is probably draw into corsairs. It's probably the only out, and they have to roll basically no movement. So, um, all right. So I get another uh, red tile, which is a reveal. So like maybe theoretically, if they roll uh, very few. Um, movement, then maybe I can stop them. Um, and so I allocate one eye. Corruption is not an issue at all. And I roll no more eyes. I get one uh, Palantir, which might be enough, I guess, to be able to play, give it to us. And then they get this ludicrous roll. Um, and I still don't have Day Without Dawn. So Maybe that's another argument in favor of cycling in Grey Havens. In case they get some crazy rule like this, then I have Day Without Dawn. Um, so anyway, they move, um, they get a zero tile, and um, it is theoretically impossible for me to win if all they do is move. Because... Um, even if I, so I play this, I play this red tile, but they have one, two, three, and then a ring for movement. And even if they hit the red tile, that's one movement. They hide, that's two. They hit the three again, uh, the, the other stop tile, that's, that's three. And then they use a ring to, to move. And I don't have any, I have no character dice. So even if I cycle some character cards, I don't even have any character cards in my hand. So um, that that's just not enough corruption, right? That's one plus three is four. An eye at that point would, would cost uh, five corruption. That's nine corruption. And they are they have more than that. So I could concede here. I don't because, you know, why not play it out? They play Smeagol Helps Nice Master. And this actually gives me a theoretical chance of um, of them not destroying the ring at this point because they played that. Uh, because now if they hit both red tiles, they actually won't be able to destroy the ring this round. So it's a good, that's like sort of a good argument to just playing it out. Like you, you don't know exactly what's going to happen. There's, there's randomness in the game. Um, and there are mistakes. So this is a very minor mistake. I'm sure it won't cost them the game as you know, but, um, okay. So I attack in gray havens and, um, I win that battle and, then they move and they destroy the ring. So this was, I, you know, I was not close to winning, like really quite far away. I never got an elven ring. This, this role actually would be quite difficult to deal with because how do I get leadership? Um, you know, to Lorien, I guess what I'm doing is like shadows on Misty Mountain and then bringing these guys over. Um, but this, yeah. So I completely de depleted the um, the pool, the elven pool, which is interesting, but it just cost me tons of time. I never did, I never even defeated Lorien. Maybe the whole Grey Havens adventure was ill-advised. Uh, I would love to hear your comments on this game. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Oh, let's look at the statistics. Uh, let's see. So... Um, you know, obviously, uh, my opponent was plus six on wills. So, you know, that's good if your opponent doesn't have a day without dawn, which I didn't. Um, so, you know, that's good. They did they did get to roll a good number of dice um, just because they got Aragorn pretty efficiently. Uh, I was, you know, a little negative uh, on combat. They didn't, didn't quite go as well as I wanted. But you look up here and I'm like minus four on eyes and plus six on... Um, army movement, which is, t you know, typically this is a good, um, a good result. Now, a lot of that came at the very end here, you can see, but, um, 
you know, this was, this was a, uh, I think my action dice, obviously it would have been nice to get a few musters, a few more musters at the beginning. Uh, there were a few turns where it was a little awkward, but, um, yeah, I mean, we can say, sure, you look at plus six wills and this sort of combat stuff and the no musters, the two musters at the beginning. Sure, there's some luck involved, but like I didn't get my, I didn't get Saruman until turn four because I waited intentionally and I didn't get the Witch King until turn three because I didn't muster the um, the Sar- Sauron in, in turn one. So... Anyway, this was the game. Hope you enjoyed it. I look forward to your comments. Thanks.